That is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, verses 5 through 6. And the scripture reads, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou touchest it, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of joy? For even thy brethren, and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. Mm -hmm. You just heard the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, verses 5 through 6. Amen. Blessing all those that hear the word. Amen. And prepare Amen. our hearts for prayer. Amen. Let's talk about his practice. Our Father. God in heaven, dear God, we come before your throne of grace and of mercy. Mm -hmm. We come thank you, dear God, for this gracious day that you have blessed all of us. Thank we thank you, dear Father, for your love and thank you for your kindness. Mm -hmm. We thank you for, dear God, the way you show how much you care for us. Yeah. We thank you, dear God, for all that your son, Jesus Christ, did and continued to do, dear God, for us. Yes. Dear God, we thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, dear God, as he works in our lives. Yeah. As we carry out your will. Yes. Bless us, dear God, and be with us. Yes. We thank you for your, your ministry, for the day of us. Amen. As he preaches his heart out there, God, trying yes. to uh, get all of us to see the truth that are found in your word. Yes. We thank you, dear God, for those, dear God, that are visiting with us today. Amen. Dear God, they have come, dear God, with the express purpose of wanting to know if there is a word in you. Yes. And Father, we pray, dear God, that they will accept that word coming yes. from your ministry. Yes. Yes. Dear God, we thank you, dear God, for all that you have done, dear God, and you provided a thing for us, dear God, that uh, we didn't even know, dear God, yeah. that we needed it, but you yeah. gave it to us anyway. Yeah. Thank, thank you so very much, dear mm -hmm. Father. Thank you for this worship service this yes. uh, morning, dear God, as we worship you, dear God, in spirit and in truth. Yes. Yeah. We pray, dear God, for those, dear God, today who have come and Dedicated a life to you, dear God, that's a great thing, dear Father. A life has shown them, dear God, that living this life without you, dear God, is not a good thing. Amen. Thank you, dear God, for the visit charge that I give. Amen. And they are here, dear God, to understand maybe something that will come from your word. Yes. And for those, dear God, who uh, have chosen not to return back to the fold, dear God, but option to stay out there, dear God, in this world that we live in, dear God, we're asking you. Please, dear God, just give them a long lease on life, yes, dear God, that they may, might realize, dear God, before it's found in their black and two legs, to come to repentance and renew their allegiance to you before time goes up last and turn to two legs, dear God. Just bless us through, through our service, dear God, and those that are sick and shut, dear God, you bless them as well, dear God, and bless them with the healing, dear God, that they are asking that they desperately need, dear God, please give it to uh, them all, dear God, that they might enjoy their health, dear God. Yes. Bless our young people, dear God. Bless our middle aged people. Bless our old folks, yes. dear God. Yes. Bless us all, dear God, yes. for we need your blessing. Yes. Yes. Bless our world that you live in, dear God. Yes. And all the problems that it has, dear Father. Bless uh, us as we uh, navigate through this life, dear God, in the midst of a pandemic, dear yes. God. We pray to God that you will keep us at bay from that. Yes. Please bless us. And please keep us, dear Father. We ask these blessings and favor in the name of your Son, Jesus. Jesus. And we all say, Amen. 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 Oh, 
and they have wearied thee, or they have worn you out, then how can you handle or contend with the horses? <coughs> and if the land of peace, if in the land of peace, rather, mm -hmm. wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how will thou do in the swelling or overflowing of the joy? For right. mm. even thy brethren, the monkey folk now, for right. even thy brethren and the house of thy father, the people that were in Anaheim, the home, the home people, even they have built treasures with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. But I tell you what, after the semicolon, believe them not. Amen. Why, comma, though they speak good words unto you. Right. You may have your seat this morning in the presence of the Lord. It is from these two passages of scripture I would like to extrapolate the subject been messing with little stuff too long. Amen. Been messing with the small stuff too long. I don't know if uh, that's your testimony. This might not even be your word this evening. But if that's your word, just say amen. Amen. If it is, then you can recognize that you've been dealing with the small stuff too long. I can tell there's a lot of people in here that have been messing with the small stuff too long. Why? Because when it is that you hear that kind of a subject automatically, there ought to be a shock in your life if you've been messing with small stuff. And now God has moved you to bigger and better things. And God has taken you to a new level. And you it's done, it's done with petty offense. You're done with petty small stuff. You're dead to be true with petty small dreams and small visions and small ideas and small mindsets. And you're done with that. You've been messing with that too long. Amen. And it's until you get uh, to this declaration that you will continue to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. The book of Zechariah, chapter number four, and verse number 10, you don't have to turn there. But it says, in Zechariah 4 and 10, it says, don't despise small beginnings. Amen. In other words, God often small, he starts small. And then God will often crescendo into a bigger thing. Small and simple, my brothers and sisters, can be good at times. But in Proverbs chapter number 24 and verse number 10, the Bible says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, mm -hmm. then your strength is small. Yeah. That's when small is not good. When it is that you give up very easily. When it is that you go through a little adversity. When it is that you go through a little trouble. And then when it is that you give up, God says your strength is small. God's expectation, watch this here. You look at your neighbor and say, God's expectation. God. Now look at your other neighbor and say, God's expectation. God. God's expectation is strength, endurance, overcoming, achievement, and victory for us as his people. Amen, somebody. I'm going to say that one more again. God's expectation for us is strength, endurance, Overcoming achievement and victory for us as his people. Why? Because God equips the believer with the strength, stamina, strength and stamina and the wherewithal to go through stuff that most people cry and complain about. Most people that go with through what you went through have committed suicide and gave up and been struck out on drugs. But you stuck in there. You hung in there. You held on to something and you said, I'm not going to give up because greater is he that is in me than is he that is in the world. I'm not going to let somebody knock me off of my blessing. So God... 
So God often, he equips, but then God exercises. God has an expectation. God equips us. And then God exercises our stamina. God exercises our stamina, not with pride and pleasure, but often with pain and adverse problems. Oh, that's so good, right? You ought to tweet that one right there. God exercises our stamina, not with parties and pleasure, but often with pain and adverse problems. For three reminders. Number one, this earth, this life, is not our home. It is not the goal. Heaven is. Number two, God wants to show us that I'm in control. Whatever of whatever your problem is, nothing is too big for me. Number three, I want you to know that God says, I love you and have a, a purpose in Christ Jesus greater than you can see. Amen. That's why I'm allowing you to go through whatever it is that you're going through, because I have a purpose greater in Christ Jesus than you can see. That's why I trusted you to lose the car. That's why I, I allowed you to get evicted. That's why I allowed you to go through the bad relationship. That's why I allowed you to make the mistake. That's why I allowed you to get fired off the job. That's why I allowed you to get messed up in the situation. Because I have a purpose. I'm going to use that pain from that purpose to for my purpose to take you to a higher level. And if it is doing that, I won't mess with small stuff. Amen. I won't fool with small, small stuff. Amen. Because I've been messing with the small stuff Amen. too long. You got to declare, as for me and my house, we about to go to the next step. I'll switch it up on you. During this season, I don't have time for no foolishness. Amen. I don't have no more time for games. I don't have no time for small talk. I don't have no time for negative energy getting away from me. And the words of P.I., big things popping. Oh, you can preach this thing better than I can. Yeah. Amen. In our text this morning, yeah. Jeremiah and the remnant of Judah are in a toxic relationship. They're in a type of bondage, a toxic environment in his hometown of Anadol. While others are free, Jeremiah and Judah are still in bondage. What do you do, Patrick, when it is that you see other people free and other people cruising and other people doing and living their best life and why you feel like that you are in bondage? I don't know about you, but uh, I've been there before, and, and sometimes you get mad at God. Have you ever got upset with God? And, like, God, I got, a, I got a problem with you, the way you're doing things, God. I'm glad to know that God showed us the human side, even of the men of God, and they even struggle with the decisions of God sometimes. Look at verse number one in Jeremiah chapter number 12. The Bible says, Righteous art thou. Go ahead, man. It says what? Righteous art thou, O Lord. Yeah. When I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Yeah. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Uh huh. Wherefore are all they happy that deal with treacherously? Tre 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 Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken roots. Yeah, really. they, they grow, yea, mm -hmm. they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their race. Now, in verse number one, very good, that he said, right is our God, O Lord. Watch this here. He uses O Lord. Lord is Yahweh or Jehovah. He's using the covenant God. Watch this here. He's going to God the right way. He's saying, righteous art thou. Before you go to God and ask him for anything, you better give him some glory and say, God, righteous and holy art thou. God is a man how about by yourself. God, you are the only one. We install your name. God, I give you glory in advance because of who you are. God, I love you. Thank you, God. Always go to God the right way. So he says, righteous art thou, God. 
God, oh Lord. He says, will I plead with thee? Now watch this here. Now, because you know how Jeremiah was smart enough to stroke God, to, to, to stroke God and, and praise him at first, but now he's getting to what it is that he really wants. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. He says, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. In other words, God, I got a real issue with the decisions you've been making me. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Uh, somebody even right now sometimes gets upset with God. I know sometimes I got upset with God. A lot of stuff, but sometimes it seems like God, you know, the way you know it said, how you gain the way to prosper? <laughs> God, in other words, God, you know, it seems like your justice system is jacked up. It seems like you got your rewards program needs rejuvenation. Because your rewards program, it seems like you reward the crooked people. It seems like the people, man, look here, the people that sit on this spouse, they got a spouse. And here I am, I want a spouse, and I want to be faithful, I can't find one. God, where is your rewards? I can tell you what the Jeremiah is going to do. You say, God, this is messed up. Why? Why do wicked folk that don't worship, that don't study, that don't give? How do they seem to be happy? Why are they enjoying life traveling? Why is their savings maxed out? Why are they making money and living good and get the promotion? Why are, uh, why are they doing and advancing the seem like before me? You got to feel Jeremiah right now. He says, look here. I've been sacrificial and giving. I've been evangelizing. I fight track and tie on Tuesday and Wednesday nights to get the Bible study. I've been faithful and working hard, and yet I'm having car troubles. My bills are behind. I'm lonely and depressed. My health is suffering. My money and credit change is strained. Credit can't get it. I got a crazy spouse that I need a check for for marriage. And God, why the married people ain't going through these kind of things? Why me, God? Anybody got a why me moment? Yes, sir. It's all right to throw your hand up. Yeah. I ain't talking about a lie me moment. I said a why me moment. Yeah. See, you don't throw your hand up and look at yeah. you're lying right now. Because yeah. all of us yeah. struggle with God's decisions sometimes. Yeah. But you have to become like Job. Whatever you decide. Bless it. Be the name. Yeah. Of the Lord. The Lord give it. The Lord take it away. But bless it. Be the name. Yeah. Blessed be the name yeah. of the Lord. Amen. What? Verse 2. Come on, man. It says what? Thou hast blessed them. Yeah. Hey, they have taken root. They have taken root. They grow. They, they grow. They bring forth fruit. Yeah. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their range. Look here. Jeremiah is saying, look, he's joking. They call them a good game. They make their speeches, but they're the ones that don't love you, Lord. I love you. I'm, I'm hanging in there with you. Why does it seem like it's taking me so long to get where it is that I want? Why it is that you let the good? Why did God seem like this thing? It is that God it seems like you miss up sometimes. Until you understand God's higher. Turn real quick. I'm going to turn one time and then let you go. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter number eight. Real quick. I don't really like turning to the sermon, but I got I got to see this. Ecclesiastes chapter number eight and white verse number eleven. Ecclesiastes chapter number eight and verse number eleven. When you get there, uh, brother Patrick, we uh, say amen and, and so I read, sir. Because sentence against an evil work is not see? executed speedily. Because a sentence against an evil work, the people who did you in, the people who left, the people did you dirt. Watch this here. It because a sentence, the, the judgment for it, God paying the person back is not against the evil work. It, against the evil work is not executed. What speedily? Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will let years go by. God will let some people go back to their years in their late years of their life. Amen. And then they will start paying back everything that they do. They thought they were running around. They thought they were playboys and got away with it. They thought they were, no, 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 no. See, God, see, God is patient. Yeah. Yeah. God will sit back for years before he starts executing judgment. 
to us men on something. And then, because most people think, well, I ain't nothing happened to me in a big couple of years. Look here, you just don't understand the grace and the mercy of God. God has a, a notebook and he's writing down the good and the bad and the ugly. The because of sin is against an evil work of not against human speed. Therefore, watch like this, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in him to do evil. Because something tragic had not happened to a lot of people. They just fully set to the vow in their mind to keep on doing evil. Amen. God said, don't get this thing twisted. I just don't do it right away. Sometimes God like this. Sometimes God sees some people that's connected to this situation and that situation. Sometimes, sometimes God doesn't pay back even some evil parents because if he, if he took the parents at that one time, the kids would suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's because of who you're connected to that God doesn't take some people's lives. Yeah. Amen. So go back to the text. I just want you to see that. Uh, so in verse number two, he says, look here, man. God, all of these people, they talking good. Amen. But God is telling them, look here, bro, payday is coming. Amen. Payday is coming. Amen. Now watch verse number three. He says what? But thou, O oh Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me yeah. and tried my heart towards thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. So no, 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 no. Here's where his theology is messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah now is like much yeah. like us. We try to manipulate God. Yeah. <laughs> you can't manipulate God into doing what His word is that you want Him to do. Yeah. His theology is messed up because watch this here, brother Ben. He thought if God got rid of him. It would bless his life. Some of us are struggling with that same theology. God told me to tell you this morning, what's for you is for you. And when he wants to bless you, nothing can stop it. If it's something that somebody else, nothing can stop it. So look here. Somebody else gives you something. If God it blesses your neighbor, you don't have to hate because he's in the neighborhood. Amen. Amen. Think, man, when God bless, when he blesses Ken Knight, look here. Why would I hate on, on Ken Knight? The same God that blessed Ken Knight, he blessed me too. Amen. He blessed me too. Amen. 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 Thou hast seen me and cried my heart toward thee. Yeah. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Yes, sir. And prepare them for the day of slaughter. Yeah. How long shall He wants to get rid of Hold on one second, man. He wants to get rid of you ever been jealous of somebody and thought if you get rid of them, they would fix your problem? Right. Yeah. That one looks yeah. straight. Yeah. Just give me a holy look. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I know you're holy, but I, I'm, I'm talking to my real folk right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yeah. You, you, you ever had, a, had an issue? You just, uh, uh, God, you know, if you look at the get rid of some people, I got some people I can nominate. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's some people I can volunteer now. Right? Yeah. 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 You need that kind of help now. I'm here for me. You know how we do it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Keep on reading. This says what? How long shall the land mourn? He said, How long shall the land mourn? And the herbs of every field wither. Yeah. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts are consumed, and the birds, because they said, He shall not see our last end. If thou hast run with the footmen. Hold right there. So, then verse 4, his theology is messed up again. So he says, God, let me tell you, God, why the world is so messed up. The world is messed up because of all these evil people that you let keep on messing the world up. And God says, no, 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 no. You don't understand, brother. The world is messed up because the church is messed up. Amen. The one that always oh, messed somebody. Amen. The reason why the world is messed up even right now. Amen. Come on. The Bible says judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. Amen. The reason why the world is messed up is because he can't trust some of these men to get their own life together, to get their stuff together, to get their house together so they can be elders, so they can be leaders, so they can be preachers. Make a difference, and that's the reason. You got women. You got women who support this mess. 
They'll know where they are. Amen. And they take care, they take care of little boys. Right. They try to make them out of a man. Yeah. And they bail them out. Right. There'd be a whole lot of men homeless if it wasn't for some of these nice men. Right. Amen. 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 And the reason right now, gee, I remember even in Genesis when they talk about, I remember when, when God was about to store, uh, I believe it was Sodom or somewhere. And, and, and he was talking to Abraham, and Abraham, he, he, he saw that I believe it was with 50 people. He said, God, if, I can, if, if you can find 50 people, he said, well, I won't, I won't destroy it if I can find 50 righteous people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had got all the way down low to 10. Yeah. He got down to 10 people, yeah. and he couldn't find 10 people. Yeah. Now, a whole town that was being sitting there. Won't come to church for years and won't ain't, ain't want nobody. Yeah. Boy, ain't bring the kids folk. Yeah. Don't want the kids folk to come. Why? Because look at the kids folk start saying, "No, it's gonna make them stand yeah. 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 God gonna burn you. Yeah. He's gonna burn you until you get right. And look at you. I'm begging. If some people ain't, you better start begging your kids folk to get up in here. Because where they at, I'm telling you, it's almost like a hole in cell with hell. Yeah. Some of these churches are, are holding sail for hell. And God, through his infinite mercy and his grace, is just letting them meet and keep on meeting in that place. It's almost like God, God says, you know what, Jesus is begging them. God, don't see them in hell. Just let them just keep on begging they worship him. Keep on letting this hold right there. And then maybe one day something will happen and maybe they can somebody can get a hold of them and come on over here and get the truth and start changing their life. Amen. The world is messed up because the church is messed up. And the church people, all they want to do is keep fighting each other. Amen. <laughs> Instead of fighting the good fight of faith, we fight over men and fight over people. Amen. And that's the reason why the world is messed up. Amen. So then he says, he says, remember um, in verse number five, now in verses number one through four, Jeremiah has a personal frustration. Yeah. He has a personal, 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 personal frustration. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Somebody personally frustrated. Yeah. You don't even have to put your hand up, but I know, I know, I know. Somebody in here is personally, personally just frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's nothing like the frustration is just different from hurt. Yeah. It's close, but it's different. The frustration is when you didn't try and try and try and try and it just seemed like nothing. Wow. Yeah. Nothing is working. Yeah. And when a person becomes frustrated, he went to the right person. Yeah. But his frustration was about how God is dealing with other people. Wow. Yeah. See, Jeremiah had the wrong focus. Instead of him worrying about what God is doing in his life, yeah. he was so worried about what he's doing with wicked people. Yeah. Yeah. And see, we can't, maybe that's not our concern. No. Amen. Our yeah. job is to share the gospel and the good news yeah. of Jesus yeah. with wicked people. Amen. Yeah. And if they want it, then fine. If they don't, find somebody else. Amen. Isn't that simple? Amen. So, Jeremiah is going through a personal frustration, and then God starts talking to him. Right. God is talking in verse number five. Mm -hmm. He says, "What that? If thou hast run with the footmen, yes, and they have wearied thee, yes, then how canst thou contend with horses, yes? Mm -hmm. And if in the land of peace, where is thou trusted, yes, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of joy?" So watch this here. So he shifts from his personal frustration. Mm -hmm. And God calls it. You've got the wrong focus. Yeah. You've been focusing on petty footmen. Amen. Amen. Tell me a reason. In a battle, in a war back then, mm -hmm. soldiers 
that began the battle yep. were called footmen. Yep. A footman was the first line of defense right. in a war. Right. Their power was limited yeah. because they're not heavily armed. Right. But a whole bunch of them keep coming. Amen. I'm talking to somebody this morning yes. who's been dealing with a whole lot of petty footmen in their life. Their power is if it ain't a battery, it's a transmission. If it ain't a transmission, it's the kids. If it ain't the kids, it's my crazy spouse. If it ain't the spouse, it's my supervisor. And all of these things, God says they are only footmen to distract you. Amen. He says the footman and their purpose in your life is to fill out the enemy line and to take out the weak and simple casualties. God is saying, if you have dealt with the footman, if you can't deal with the small stuff, how can you ever get with the horses, baby? Because my job is to take you to the horses, but your job is to declare that I've been dealing with small stuff. I've been dealing with small stuff too long. But if I'm not tired to this, a lot of us can't see the problems that our life is small. Amen. Amen. We can't see them as small. Amen. But God said they have footman problems. Amen. After they would send the footman, then they would bring the big horsemen in. Right. That was the artillery. I'm not talking about that was like the nuclear bomb. You didn't just bring, you didn't see the horsemen off of the top. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, listen. Footmen are a real problem. Amen. Look here. If you think the footmen are playing, look here. Not having a car is a real problem. Amen. The can't pay your rent is a real problem. Amen. But watch this here. It, it must be dealt with with patience. Amen. Footmen are intended to distract you and discourage you and wear you down. Amen. Watch this here. So you will give up in the beginning Amen. of the fight. Oh, I'm gonna say it one more time. Yeah. I'm, I'm preaching better than you shouting today, but that's okay. It's my kids here. Let's get learning today. Footmen are intended to distract and discourage you and wear you down so that you will give up. Footman problem. Not even like worrying about what people think. Footman problem. Having to cut back on cable. Footman problem. Being single and wanting a spouse. Footman problem. Uh, somebody says something that you don't like. Put the problem. Wait a long time on hold when it is that people put you on hold and listen to that elevator music. Amen. All of this kind of stuff. These are foot the problem. It's irritating. Amen. Footman problem. Yeah. Footman problem. See, footman problem, remember, they're made to wear you down. Amen. But watch this here. A horse has major power. Uh, in fact, that's why they call a car that's fast horse power. Yeah. Because a horse, a horse in itself can run up to 55 miles an hour. Yeah. Watch this here. A horse can sleep standing up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> See, a human can't do this in their own strength. But if it is that I connect with God, God says you will be able uh, Read it one more time, verse number five. I'm going to close that. Uh, I'm tired. Read this as well. If thou hast run with the foot, if thou hast run with the foot, and they have wearied thee, yeah. then how canst thou contend with horses? He says, if you can't deal with the small stuff that's going on in your life. How can you deal with the big place where it is that I'm going to take you? Can't you see the footman in your life, the footman problem in your life? It's only a preparation for the greater things that I'm about to carry you. When the footman come out, Watch this here. 
and start complaining and crying and get mad, get irritated when the footman saw to come out a whole bunch of little stuff out there. It is irritating. Yeah. Amen. But watch this here. Start shouting. Amen. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. Who wants to shout over a bad when they bad and they not? Start shouting. Amen. Because watch this here. The footmen are validation. You're headed in the right direction. The devil won't send footmen against your life and make you headed to the right place. And he don't want you to get there because he knows the horse is away. The way he does, he gets weak people off mm -hmm. by sending a couple of old footmen problems. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get to dealing with footmen problems, that's what your mind gets consumed in, and you start dealing with footman people. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you'll even connect or marry a footman. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And when you marry a footman, when you involve yourself in a footman, when you start thinking like a footman, you never go to the next level. Because every day, you think it's small. Right. You're constantly arguing small. Yes. I don't know about you, but I've reached, I'm 48 years old, and I've reached a point where I'm done and I'm tired of arguing Amen. with Amen. footmen. Amen. I'm not dealing, I'm not arguing with no more footmen. If you want it, you want it. If you don't, oh well. Amen. When you get to the point where it is, you say, you know what? I've been messing with this small stuff. Right. Yeah. Too long. Amen. Now, you, what you do when you make that kind of a statement, you declare to God, God, I know the footmen mm -hmm. are coming in my life, and I know things are not where I want them to be. Yes, but I trust in you, Lord. Amen. And I know the horse. I know you get ready. You get me ready. For the horse. You get to be ready. You get to be ready, Lord. You get to be ready for the bigger things in my life. Amen. That's why things are going the way they're going because you get to be ready. Because if, they were, if, if I wasn't connected to you or if you weren't trying to start a relationship with me, with me this stuff wouldn't be happening because evil people, Jeremiah said, look here, evil people look like they're getting away. God is giving me even the man of God right here. He said, man, look here, you got the wrong perspective, bro. Yeah. Yeah. One more time, verse number five. Come on, man, it says what? If thou hast run with the footmen, yeah. and they have wearied thee, if they worn thee out, then how canst thou contend with horses? Then look here, if you can't handle this little itty bitty, uh-oh, amen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> itty bitty stuff, yeah. he says, then, where I'll take you? How can you run yes. with these thoroughbreds and assholes? Yes. Yes. Right. Somebody might say, Sherry, I can't run 55 miles an hour. You're right. By yourself, you can. Yes. But with me, I can be ready to get in the run with the horses. I'm going to get you ready to do something that you can't do in your own strength. Yes. I can shout about that. Because God is telling me, David, quit sweating the small stuff. Amen. You've been sweating the small stuff so long, so how can you handle the major problem? Look here, when it is that God graduates you to the next level, That's right. you're going to have bigger, way bigger problems than this little stuff right here. Amen. But watch this here. The bigger the problem, the bigger the promotion God has given you. You want bigger problems. Amen. Because that's an indication that God has graduated you Amen. from the footprint. Some of us spend our life dealing with footmen. There are a lot of footmen even in the church of Christ. Footmen people. They've been doing the same thing for 20 and 30 and 10, 20, 30, 40 years. The same thing. You tell me all this word, and look at it. You do the same thing in the same seat, in the same situation. Smile, same smile, same joy. There ain't nothing changed about you. Amen. 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 
Why? Because they've been playing on Footman Playground. And when you play with Footman, you'll run around, watch this here. Remember, Footman have no real power. But footmen can sting you and they can even kill you if you're not prepared. And I'm telling you today, the footmen are dangerous. But the footmen can be dealt with with patience. You can deal with footmen. See, the footmen can be dealt with. But they got to be dealt with with patience. Amen. Take your mind off of other people. Yeah. Yeah. Focus in. I'm not saying don't care about them. Yeah. Not be concerned. I'm just saying, look here, we're so worried about other people mm-hmm. and the Republicans and what they're doing and what this person right. doing and what they're doing over here. Look here. Why don't you be concerned about what God yeah. is doing Amen. and trying to tell you yeah. even in your life? Amen. If, even if you're not baptized this morning, you still play the play with footprint. That's why I'm so glad that somebody, you're in the right place this morning. If you've heard the word, believe it, repent it, because like I said, come to the Lord. I'm going to show you the slow down. If you want to come to the Lord and be born again, you hear the word. The fact that Jesus died and was buried, but the rose the third day according to the scripture. Can you, can you believe that? That Jesus is the Son of God? Are you willing to repent? That means to turn from your way of life. And turn towards God. You can come up here when at the end of this lesson. I'm going to ask you one question. Do you believe in Jesus and Son of God? And if you say yes, we're going to take you back, put you on some clothes, and we're going to baptize you. In the beginning of your kingdom. And you no longer, you no longer belong in the footman, footman category no more. Now you're dealing with a whole nother fight. A whole nother level. That's right. And let me show you when it is that you get saved, when it is that you go to the next level, when it is that, you, that God is moving you. Let me show you the first thing that you got to fight and we're close. Watch this here. The Bible says in verse number six, it says, For even, for even, even thy brethren, even what? Even thy brethren, even our brethren, and the house of thy father. Oh, yes, right. the people that you. That you think that I'm for you, yes. namely your kinfolk. Yes. Oh Lord, that was very yes. yes. They conspire and talk against you, and if you're not careful, they'll knock you off focus. You'll feel I don't know why I'm talking to somebody that feels like the black sheep of the family. You feel odd and out of place, but I'm telling you, God says, don't worry about. See, look here. Once you deal with the footman, you still got to deal with problematic people. And namely, the first problematic people in your life are going to come in the form of people with your same name. God is telling it to you right here. He said, For even thy what? Thy brother. And the house of thy father. But he I'm here to tell you this morning, when you go, when you see this kind of stuff happening, when the family turns against you, what it is is God is building your character. He's building you. Go ahead and get the clear road. But after this clear road, say thank you, God, because you're getting me away from people who are not for you. And if they're not for you, God deliver me from the footman. Deliver me from the footman. Deliver me from problematic family members. Because problematic family members are the thing that as soon as you try to go forward, they're going to bring you back. This is what happened to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in his hometown of Anabal. And they were like, who are you? Who do you think you are? Because that's what problematic family members say. They don't want you to grow. Amen. Sometimes they want you to grow, but it's not past them. As long as you say stay self-serving to them, they're all right. But as soon as you start growing up, oh, 
that's what it is. It's very big. It's small. Come on. Let's see you blow it up. Night, night, go in. Yeah. 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 But problematic people, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Right. Jeremiah is doing a beautiful work. Mm -hmm. He's trying to promise out to the people of God to bring them out of bondage. Yeah. But yet, why are the people mm -hmm. speaking treacherously right. about him? Yeah. <laughs> because that's most frustrating when you're trying to do the right thing. Hey, don't you see, Mama? I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I've changed my life. I'm making solid decisions. Why don't you recognize? She won't recognize it because she won't. She, if she recognizes that, it turns the mirror on her. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't mature, it'll be problematic for you. Why are they talking treacherously about somebody who has grown and trying to free other people? Amen. <laughs> you answer me that. Oh, uh, look here. Why do people always talk about people who are trying to free other people? Now listen to me closely. I want you to ask yourself that. I don't want you to just embrace it just for a second. People never talk about somebody sleeping under the bridge. Yes, sir. They only talk about somebody trying to make moves. Yes. Trying to go to the next level. Yes. Or trying to bring somebody else yes. to the next yes. level. Yes. And that's how family members do. Yes, sir. And if you let family members, if you let footmen, or you let your personal frustration, mm -hmm. it'll take you out of the box. Yes. Amen. Amen. Finish it off, Pastor. He says, well, for even thy brethren, in the house of thy father, in the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously. He said, even they have dealt treacherously. When he read it. Yea. Yea. They call a multitude after thee. Uh-huh. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. He said, look here. What they're speaking is lies. Yeah. Yeah. When people try to discourage you, when you try to do the right thing, they're on assignment from Satan. Yeah. They're trying to frustrate you and bring you down yeah. with them. Yeah. See, the personal frustration, that's you. Right. <laughs> the footman, that's the problem that's coming at you. Yeah. But the problematic family members, that's a part of you in blood. Amen. But when it is that I wash away my sins, Amen. blood never, it doesn't trump to the blood of Jesus. Amen. That what can wash away my sins? Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. If you are here this morning and you declare that I've been messing with the small stuff, too long. Amen. Too long. I'm not getting into no more small relationships. Amen. Either I'm going to date with a purpose, and they date me with a purpose to get married. I'm not laying down with nobody that's not interested. I'm not laying down with nobody in this body is not getting married. Amen. I'm done messing with footmen. That's all you're looking for is a T3. I'm bigger than a purpose. I'm bigger than some tennis shoes. I'm bigger than that. My body is bigger than that. No, no, no. Even if you buy me a house, I ain't just losing my soul for no house. No, I'm getting it. I'm getting it, getting it with footmen. Footmen people, negative energy, I'm done with it. You ain't got no positive energy. You ain't talking about saving no souls. Or you ain't talking about no love or getting no money. I, ain't, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't want to talk about it. I can tell you I can't even do no more. You might call me my boy, I might have uh, cut his with you, but, but now I'm running out of time. I ain't got time no more, brother. I ain't got time. I don't want to be here. I hope you God let me live a hundred before it. Amen. But I don't know. Amen. Amen. That's my will. But I don't know what God's will. Amen. But you don't either. Amen. It's not. 
promised that you would live tomorrow. Amen. And that's why God is inviting you even right now. Yes. He's saying, look here, you need to get saved. Yes. Come on and get saved this morning. Amen. Him, believing with him, confessing, and submitting to one of that. If you're here today and you need to rededicate your life to the Lord and you're standing in need of prayer, or you're looking for a church home, I would love to be your pastor. Amen. I would love to be your pastor. But that's up to you. Nobody can force you. It's up to you. But you got to make the, the, the decision that you're done dealing with the small stuff. Amen. If that's your testimony this morning, why don't you come on board, even on this morning today? Amen. Without you, Lord.